My name is Yang Zhang, and today I'm going to present you NVIDIA NEMO text normalization from development to production. This is a joint work with Evelina Bakterina and Boris Ginsburg. Imagine you are building a speech recognition system. You receive as input an audio sequence. On May 3rd, we paid $123. This audio is sent through your deep learning automatic speech recognition model, and you get the following transcript. A perfectly correct transcription, even though not really what we as user would like to see. What we expect is something like this, something that is readable with numbers that we expect. This process is called inverse text normalization, where words that are spoken differently, so-called semiotic tokens, are converted to their written form. The opposite direction is called text normalization and is often used as a pre-processing step to aid a text-to-speech model. In production, both inverse text normalization and text normalization systems are often rule-based using weighted finite state grammars. This is to better control the behavior and prevent unrecoverable errors that change the input semantic, for example, by mistakenly converting 12 to 13. These mistakes are detrimental and need to be prevented. WFST grammars are good at that. Another benefit of WFST-based systems is that they are used to create datasets for data-driven methods like neural networks. This significantly reduces the cost to collect hand-labeled data. Despite the importance of WFST-based normalization systems for ASR and TTS in production, there's one open source C++ framework called Sparrowhawk, which is a part down version of Google Kestrel with only a limited set of grammars. We introduce an open source Python framework for inverse and text normalization inside the NVIDIA NEMO toolkit. It uses grammars written in PyNini, a Python tool that uses OpenFST underneath and compiles these grammars into WFSTs. These compiled grammars can be exported and dropped into Sparrowhawk, so the NEMO framework offers seamless deployment to C++, a pipeline which can be reproduced by others for their own product. Currently, the system provides grammars for English and it is going to be extended to other languages like German, Russian, Spanish, etc. The system is uh, deployed in the conversational AI product NVIDIA Riva. How does it work? Nemo Text Normalization offers a Python environment for developers to easily adjust and create grammars and use it for their research purposes. This framework can also directly run and validate the Python system. The Python framework has a similar design to Sparrowhawk, which keeps a placeholder for compiled grammars and loads them for execution. The benefit of this design is you'll be able to export the grammars that you've created in Nemo Text Normalization into an OpenFST finite state archive file and directly drop them into Sparrowhawk and use in production with much lower latency. Let's take a closer look at the Python API. First, we have the classification step carried out by an FST-based grammar. This tags the input with meta information and can also introduce some numerals. The parse step parses the string into an object with key values for better manipulation. The function generate permutation may reorder some key values to match the written order of tokens. For example, in the case of $123, the dollar sign and the number are going to be swapped. In the final verbalization step, the grammar removes all meta information and creates the final output. We evaluated our system on the test set of the English Google Text Normalization dataset. This contains 92,000 tokens across various semiotic classes like cardinal, ordinal, decimal, etc. For inverse text normalization, we adapted the test set using a script that is also included in the framework. The text normalization system reaches an exact match sentence accuracy of 82%. The inverse text normalization reaches an accuracy of 73.7%.
How do I use it in Python? So after you've installed PyMini as well as the Nemo Toolkit, you'll be able to run Python and import the Nemo text processing package, which contains both text normalization and inverse text normalization. So in the case of inverse text normalization, we would import the inverse normalizer. And after that, we would create an instance of it. And then finally, we would run inverse normalize on a sentence. In this case, on May 3rd, we paid $123. This will be denormalized to the written format. If you set verbose to true, it will, in addition, also print some additional meta information um, about the classes which the words are tagged with. So, for example, May 3rd will be tagged as month, whereas $123 will be tagged as money. How do I use it in C? First, we're going to download the Nemo repository and then we go into the top folder, um, install the repository if we haven't done so locally. And afterwards, we'll go into the subfolder, uh, tools, text processing deployment. And here I'm gonna run the export grammar script, either with text normalization or in this case, inverse text normalization grammars. And what is this is doing is it's taking the grammars that lie in the Nemo toolkit exporting them into FAR files and dropping these uh, FAR files into a Docker container where Sparrowhawk uh, RC++ backend is installed. So it's returning a prompt inside the Docker container and now we're able to run inputs using this system uh, instead. So here if we use the same input as before, on May 3rd we paid $123 and voila, we see we're getting the same output, but this is actually run using C++ backend. How do I add my own grammars? What if you wanted to actually customize your own grammars and extend by a complete new class, for example, that can recognize email addresses? So you will download the Nemo repository. You will go into Nemo text processing, inverse text normalization, and here you will find two subfolders called taggers and verbalizers. And taggers will contain the grammar files for classification. Verbalizers will contain the grammar files for verbalization. So if you want to add email address, create one file for each of these subfolders. For example, in this case, we already did this. So we named this electronic.py. When we open this, you create a class you name it, in this case, electronic. You inherit from graph FST, and you would use PyNini to create your grammars. And what does this grammar do? It will consume as input one string, which will represent the spoken format of the email address. So this would be, for example, cdf1 at abc.edu, and it would return another string, but which represents an object. So this object will have the class name in there, but also the keys, username, and domain as meta information. And this intermediate representation will be then consumed by the verbalization grammar to return the written format that we ultimately want without any label information. So given that you have created these files, you would then add the classification grammar to the final classification grammar file, which is called tokenize and classify.py, um, along with all the other graphs. And the same thing you would do for the um, verbalization. So you add it to the final verbalization graph, your electronic graph. To test this out, you go into your working directory, which is Nemo, Nemo, text processing, inverse text normalization, and then we're going to inverse normalize with, for example, abc at gmail.com. Now 
before you can deploy your newly created grammars, you need to make sure that all the uh, newly created meta information like electronic and as well as the labels, username and domain are supported in your Sparrowhawk backend. For that, you go to the copy of your Sparrowhawk repository, source, proto, and semiotic classes proto. And here you create an entry of what you want to support. So in this case, electronic. So you will add an entry for electronic class as long as uh, all the labels that you want to support. So including username and domain. So after that, you'll be able to use these fields when you create these grammars, and these grammars, when you export them, will be compatible with your Sparrowhawk backend. So after that, you will then go into your um, local uh, text processing deployment directory, and you will update your Docker and re-export the grammars. Then you run echo um, again a b c at gmail.com. To see the inverse text normalization grammars in action we have deployed these in the post-processing of the ISR pipeline of the product NVIDIA Riva, which is a conversational AI service. This is a Jupyter notebook that can be found in the quick start of the NVIDIA Riva project website. We start off with setting up all the requirements, connecting to the Riva speech API server, which we have already started in the background, then we load our test audio example, which is On May 3rd, we paid $123. To transcribe this audio, we then send off a recognized request to the server and receive as output the following denormalized text.